The Bricklink Bowling Alley is a great looking set, and while it may have some flaws, its main downside is that it takes up a lot of room without being very tall. So today I'm going to be adding a second floor to it. Originally I proposed a possible laser tag area. However, I realized that it would be much better if you could actually see inside, and a dark laser tag wouldn't allow for that. So instead, I'll be building a bouldering gym with some big clear windows out front. In the original set, the roof is split 60-40. So my plan is to build the second floor on the larger side and then utilize the rooftop space of the smaller side. This also means I can just use the ladder in the back for access instead of trying to incorporate stairs inside. It's not ideal for customers, but hey, they're climbers, they'll be fine. First, we'll start with the floor and add two of the walls. The back wall has lots of integrated modified bricks that'll be used here soon. The side wall also has a few studs towards the outside. I made sure to keep the exterior the same as the first floor with those dark red columns and some dark tan masonry bricks poking through. Let's add a couple of corner details to match the original, and we're off to a great start. The first thing to do inside is add some mats in front of the climbing walls, which you can see here with these black tiles. Maybe I could have made them another plate thicker, but I think they look fine. The first climbing section will add a slab and crack area in the corner. Not every gym has these, so it's a good feature for this gym. The slab has some big slopes at the bottom and an angled edge to pull against, along with various textured pieces. The crack winds up between different slope pieces and is just big enough to jam your hand in. Along the side will be one of the main walls. It's a simple vertical wall, but it does have a couple of bins to angle around inside the front corner. You can see that it has a ton of modified bricks that'll be used for all the climbing holds. I actually spent a lot of time designing all the routes in here because I wanted it to look realistic. Now, I've never set professionally, just on a home climbing wall I built back in the day, so let me know if you see any broken beta. The teal route has some side pulls to use as you work your feet up the side wall and then a purple volume jutting out in your way. This red one is pretty hard and requires good footwork with some smearing and flagging, as well as some upper body strength to get through that gas stone and up to the volume. The yellow problem is pretty straightforward, but I did use headlight bricks to inset those tiles to represent some crimps. The white problem is a short, fun one that starts with an undercling and requires a stepping dyno up to the volume. This teal one requires you to navigate around the purple volume, probably using your heel, and then to keep your footing on top of it. The yellow is an easy beginner route that teaches you some movement. And then the pink one is the easiest problem in the gym, with a starting hold on the side. As you can see, I kept the same color palette for the holds as the bowling alley downstairs. Next to the slab, we have a training area, with a campus board on the right and a slope board on the left to train that open grip strength. There's also a clock up top. Next, I'll add the entrance desk and a small retail shop. The desk has a computer, phone, and of course a stack of waivers over there on the right. Up above are a couple of shelves with shoe boxes, bags of chalk, and some chalk blocks. Over on the floor is a small table displaying some more climbing shoes. Then I used a sticker from a LEGO RV to represent a climbing brand for the poster on the wall. And I plan on adding this minifig as the employee behind the desk, but I'm still waiting for him to arrive in a bricklink order. Next we'll add a couple of interior rooms. The small bathroom just has a toilet and a sink. No shower or sauna in this gym. And next to that is the small setter's closet. There's a couple of impact drivers hanging on the wall, and a crate filled with some random holds. This shelving unit has a couple of boxes of more holds, a toolbox, and a circular saw for repairing walls and making volumes. It's small, but has what you need. A simple roof goes on top that extends down a little to cover a gap, and then obviously the setters need a ladder to set all the routes. It just attaches to the top of the roof. Now let's add the entrance wall. The front door has a little mountain sign above it to indicate that it's a climbing gym. And then there are some important studs that we'll be using here in a little bit. Inside there are some more studs, along with another clock. I also used this spiderweb sticker I had because the nooks of gyms are always filled with dust and cobwebs. Next, let's add some amenities to this little area. We have a couple of shoe cubbies with a chalk block on top of one of them, a little bench, and a water cooler. You gotta have the basics. After adding some more crash mats, it's time for the next wall. This will be the big show wall right in front of all the windows. It has a steep angle halfway up and will incorporate some more comp type problems. It attaches to the studs on the sidewall, and I was surprised that it stays up by itself but I'll go ahead and include the support column I designed so that it looks more structural. And it also holds the big speaker for the gym's music. The first route has an overhead hold that turns into an undercling, followed by a big bowl you'll have to manage around. The teal one has some tricky slopes down low and a couple of volumes to hang from up above. The red problem has some hard starting holds you'll have to lean against with an open grip to get your feet up. The white route is a funky one with just bowls and balls. You might be able to dyno it, or you could just work your way up. And the teal one has a throwback to the undercling and some tough crimps on the overhang. Finally, every climbing gym has a spray wall filled with random holds for you to make your own problems. Now we can add the final tan wall and fill in the gap that's seen from above. But before we add the windows, let's incorporate some minifigs. This youngster is having a great time climbing, but his dad is rather stressed out trying to keep him safe. Next we have a couple of female climbers. This one's training on the spray wall, and her friend is encouraging her while chilling on the mats. And finally, we have a climber who is a little beaten up from his last session. We can also add a couple of chalk bags on the mats. 
I'm continuing the red columns up from the first floor and using clear bricks in between them. This section turned out great and it gives us a great view of all the details inside. It will also help entice the passing pedestrians down below to come up and buy a day pass. Next we can work on the sidewall. The local gym I used to climb at was located on the top floor of a mall, and outside it had a tall wall on the neighboring rooftop for rope climbing. So that's what I'll be doing here on top of the bowling alley's roof. First I built two tall climbing walls. One has a single bend, and the other has two bends. I'll connect them together and they'll attach to the second floor with some Technic beams on the backside. I spent so long designing the section in CAD, and it was such a pain making tons of little adjustments trying to get everything lined up. It probably would have been easier to just try different things in real life, but I didn't have enough pieces to experiment. The beams on the back will attach to trusses, and the trusses will mount on the ledges, while the bottom sections connect to the studs on the sidewall. I was pretty worried this wasn't going to work and it was going to need a redesign, but it actually worked perfectly. The yellow route starts with some normal holds, has a shelf above the overhang demantle, is followed by some difficult slopey holds, and then has a layback at the top. The teal route has small holds on the overhang, so make sure to plan your footing for that underclang and the side pull above it. And then at the top I used those minifig handle studs to represent a column of tufa holds. The white route is going to demand a decent amount of strength to get up those stalactites, and the second roof doesn't let up with that pinch grip. And then the top section treats you to some painful huecos before reaching the chains. The red route is more straightforward, but it is crimpy and probably requires a heel hook to send the second overhang. Going around to the other side, I'll add a nice big sign for the gym that says climb. It's backed by some mountains and matches the font on the big tall sign that says bolt. Before adding the gym, I need to update these roofs a little. The large roof stays pretty much the same, with just a few additional bricks to finish the trim. However, the smaller roof needs to be reworked. I need to move the ace units over to the side, which will make room for some more black mats on the left. I guess I don't really need mats for the roped area, but it'll make for a good space below the wall. Bringing back the bowling alley, I can add the smaller rooftop, the climbing gym, and the larger roof. For the climbing ropes, I use these long strings that are really expensive on BrickLink for some reason, but they're much cheaper on LEGO Pick a Brick if you can wait the two months for shipping. I couldn't figure out a good way to incorporate bolts and connecting the strings for lead climbing, so unfortunately you can only top rope at this gym. I added Jack climbing up top because he has a great scared face, and then Parker is belaying him down below and getting annoyed that Jack keeps bailing at the same spot. I spent a long time designing this add-on second floor to the bowling alley set, and I could not be happier with how it turned out. I think it looks awesome. I worked at a climbing gym for a few years, so I tried to incorporate everything you might need and keep everything fairly realistic. I think the U-shaped layout works well, and it allowed me to fit three different walls inside, where I was able to incorporate lots of different climbing techniques. I'm also glad I was able to fit in a bathroom, setter's closet, and entrance area. The front windows allow great views inside the gym, and the taller outside climbing walls bring back some fun memories. I think it looks pretty awesome here in the front front right corner of my lego city, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to build it yourself, check the description for the instructions on Rebrickable. Thanks for watching everyone, and climb on!